Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're live in PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. It is Monday. We'll reflect on the weekend's results in the Scottish Premiership. We'll look at the English Premier League and, of course, the big games coming up this week in Europe. And at the weekend, we've got Scottish Cup semi-finals to look forward to. It's Edinburgh and Glasgow head-to-head. -head. It's Hearts against Hibs. It's Rangers against Celtic. You can give us your view as well. Don't forget... Hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel and if you hit the bell you'll get all the notifications of when we're live and our unique content. You're going to hear from a barrel load of managers and players today. You'll also hear from Andrew Shiny, our reporter in the North East and his reflection on Aberdeen's performance at the weekend. But uh, first and foremost, um, great to have Ruffy back with us. Uh, Hugh, you've been quite scathing in your criticism of him since he's uh, been away. Well, I think I've just been scathing. I don't think, I, I don't think I've been quite scathing at all. I just think it's I've just been a dereliction of duty. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's like Tam will know. I mean, it's like, a team, it's a team game. It's yeah. a team game, and a teammate just goes wandering yeah. off, yeah. wandering off, leaving the rest is to carry the load. And uh, you've seen it before because you've been here ten years, you, and uh, you know uh, that there are certain uh, people who are committed. Yeah. And by the way, hurt me less, though. you know better than most. Badge kissers are out the door shortly, aren't they? I know. I know. <coughs> Don't forget, uh, Tam McManus is with us as well uh, on the program. I have to say to get my, this is to get myself <laughs> back in the books. Listen to how work this. Okay. <laughs> While I was away, obviously, you know, I was in full inclusive. No shops, yep. no newspapers, uh -huh. television was all foreign stuff. I hadn't a clue what was happening, mm. but I had my PLZ app. Good. So which I tuned to into every day at yeah, four o'clock. <laughs> and you can keep up with everything that's happening in the world of football. Yeah. And that's what kept me. It's a good way to crawl out of it. Anyway, apart from anything else, <laughs> hi to Elizabeth, Stephen and uh, Ryan who've joined us and Graham as well. Uh, lots of people. Stuart Ramsey, who's been one of our followers from oh, right at the start, along with Nikki Twig and Lee and David as well. Um, great to have you guys with us. Um, we value everyone's support, so if you do get a chance, uh, share the stream and, of course, let all your friends know as well. You can click on the subscribe button. So, weekend. Well, if the bottom half of the table was hoping to get anything out of Rangers and Celtic, uh, they were... Um, Sadly mistaken mm. because Rangers thumped St Mirren mm. uh, and of course Kima Roof got himself a hat-trick. Yeah, and, and a good time to get a hat-trick. I mean, he's obviously hurting when you listen to questions afterwards. He was quite spiky about uh, being there to get goals. So a good time to get him. Puts him in the frame, obviously, uh, for Thursday after, uh, you know, being uh, sort of persona non grata last week. Uh, so, yeah, good time to get in. Good Ramsey as well, taking him off to, to keep him fresh for Thursday. So it was a kind of perfect day for Rangers, actually. Early goal, overwhelmed uh, St Martin, able to rest players, able to, to bring in a few, Steve Davis, etc., etc., for, for a wee run out. So, yeah, a perfect day for them. Yeah, um, here's what uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst had to say about the overall performance. Great goal from Aribo as well, we must mm. uh, highlight. It's very important to get back to winning ways after two defeats. I'm happy to have the win uh, for the squad and that we could rotate some spots because of the score, and I think they did well. Um, Kima Riff was in the box, and we know before the game that we would uh, get a lot of opportunities to cross the ball and we have to make sure that we put them in dangerous areas and make good runs uh, that's what we did and gave ourselves some goals from those positions so fairly happy with that um, the, the downside of it all Ruffy is okay great hat trick for Kima Roof nice couple of headers and a good shot um, and a brilliant goal from uh, Joe Aribo, but the downside is Lundstrom groin injury, a little bit of worry for midweek, we're waiting on the assessment on that, and of course Hellander on crutches um, which doesn't augur well for the um, semi-final yeah. yeah, I think we we spoke about that a month ago, you know the, 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 the games of Rangers are going to be fast and furious, that's when you pick up injuries, that's when you get suspensions uh, I, I was pleased Steve Davis got a game the weekend, I thought that gives the manager something to think about, I think in the European football, I think he's the kind of player that could slot in there uh, and do a job. But no, it would be a worry, you know, and obviously Roof scoring at the weekend. We know he can score against St Martin and the Motherwolves and everything. He's got to prove to everybody that he can score against the big boys. Yeah, the flip side was St Martin just were not at the races and it's one win in eight. And Stephen Robinson, he's the manager who's got to try and change and turn things around and he accepts that he hasn't been able to do that. 100%. It hasn't been good enough since I came in. Um, 
you know, I don't look to blame anybody else. It hasn't been good enough. One win in nine says that. I think there's a lot of teams similar to that. So I think there's a lot of teams going into this post split with a lack of confidence. So it's up to me to get the boys going again, find a system that stops us conceding as many goals as we have. Um, we don't need to be pretty between now and the end of the season. To be fair, I think managers that come in, Tam, and I'm going to be obviously including Sean Maloney in this, <coughs> uh, Jim Goodwin as well. I think managers who come in, uh, you know, it's not at a transfer window. They, they've got to get their own players in there. They want to do their own thing. Yeah, I, t I totally agree with that. I, I think obviously Jim Goodwin's in Aberdeen and, <coughs> and St. Man Robertson, so it's, it's difficult again. But you, you're always looking for that wee bounce. You know, a new manager bounce coming in. Yeah. Neither they've not had that at all. And listen, St. Man, they're, they're starting to drift down towards St. John. I know St. Johnson get gobbed in the weekend, but. You know, there's not that big a gap now between St. Johnson and Dundee are starting to pick up points, albeit points are not going to be enough, they need to start winning a few games, but, you know, I don't think St. Mirren, you know, Aberdeen are, are totally safe yet for, for that playoff position, they still need a win or two, I think, in the bottom six, or else, you know, they could get dragged into it, so, listen, Robinson will just be wanting, Stephen Robinson will just be wanting the season to finish, he'll be wanting to get to the summer, clear that place out, you know, get six or seven in, you know, and six or seven out, and put his real stamp on the team, because they were poor at the weekend. Yeah, um, I think you've got to highlight that as well. I mean, Kimar Roof has said he, he's been there a couple of years, doesn't need to prove anything to anybody, Rafi. I think he deserves credit because for me in the last 10 years, he scored the best Europa League goal <laughs> I've seen in the last 10 years. He's got himself a hat-trick. I think he's bagged himself something like 15 goals this yeah, season. I mean, he's, he's... And still people don't consider him the answer to... Alfredo Morelos. No, that's a problem that he's got, you know, and you can't take away the goals that he scored. And in our league, he is a quality player, you know, but obviously with Morelos not being there anymore, you know, Rangers are looking at him to step in there and be the top man against Celtic and be the top man against Braga. And, and that's what they're looking for. And everybody's waiting to see if he can come up to the mark. We all know he can score goals, you know, it's at what level? He's a different player than Morelos as well, you yeah. know, Morelos is a player that gets you up the park, you know, unsettles defenders, can play with his back to the goal as well. That is a great, what I call it, I, I, I think strikers who are a great nuisance, ah, can cause, you know, cause a fight in an empty house. Ah, he just bumps about, yeah. bumps into people and and, and, and very good at hand, uh, holding up the ball, I thought he was terrific. And the West Fallen for that. I mean, I thought absolutely terrific. And Ruth's different, you know, and, and that's not just a problem for Ruth, it can be a problem for the team as well. If you're used to if you used to be in trouble and just go off, oh, throw up the channel and Alfredo will keep it naming it up and you're just throwing it into nothingness, that creates a problem for I mean the Celtic, you know, the Celtic Rangers game, I thought that was really apparent. You know, at times when Rangers had the ball in midfield. You know, it seems daft to say because the the, the, the there was no great threat, Peter. You yeah. know, there was no great, you know, aggression in that final third. There was a lot of crosses coming in, a lot of pity party stuff in front of them. But I just thought they were pretty blunt without them. You know, sometimes with a bit of confidence in scoring goals, though, Tam. I, I think you know he, he's a type of player now that might look and say, "Well, Morelos is not coming back, so here's a chance to go and and get back on level terms against Braga." Maybe score the winner and, and suddenly everything in the garden is rosy for him. Yeah, he's already got a run in the team now, there's no doubt about yeah. that. He's the number one striker. He obviously showed um, yesterday that he can score goals. If you look at his three goals yesterday, every single one of them was between the posts. You know, he gets his cell in there, two headers, and then they kind of tap in. So, as Stu said there, he's different. He's different from Morelos. He wants to come to the ball, he wants crosses into the box. Morelos can spin and run in behind. So, they're different types of players, but. I think he is a decent player, but as Ruffy said, he's got to prove it on the big stage. He's got to prove it against Braga at the weekend and in the, the semi-final. Yeah, can they beat Braga? Will yeah. they beat Braga? Yeah, I think they will. Yeah. I think I think Rangers will beat Braga. I think a full Ibrox behind them is a very difficult place yeah, to go and get a result. So I think Rangers will win the game. You on yeah, that, Cam? Yeah, yeah, I think they will as well. Yeah. I think it'll be narrow, but I think they'll win. Hugh? I think it's a 50-50. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to go for Rangers to to win it, um, unless in the next couple of days something dramatically um, changes my mind. You know, maybe Hellander or something else that we don't know. But I, I think they've got more than enough in the squad. Yeah, I don't think Hellander yeah. or Lundstrom. Are, I mean, Lundstrom has come on a game. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think they're huge blows no. because they're, they're, they're as, you know there's positions in the team that I think I think the lingering blow is Morelos. I, you know, you don't want to go on and on about it, but he's such an important part of the team 
that that would be the, you know, everything else is collateral damage. Yeah. Um, well, listen, if uh, Rangers can get that confidence boosting win on Thursday, then suddenly they can start to bank more cash, think about the semi final, and then get all their minds focused on Celtic for the semi final on Sunday. But. Um, if anybody was hoping that Celtic would just drop off at Ruffy, um, seven nothing is not dropping off it. Yeah. They absolutely are going through the gears at the right time. Yeah, it's frightening some of the the movement you know that they have, the the pace they do it when they get into the the later stages of the park. You know, they're, they're electric in there. Every one of them, they're all buzzing. You know, and to to come to Parkhead and sit in and get beat seven nothing, you know, doesn't it doesn't look very good, does it? Because that's what St. Johnson trying to do. And that, that, we were talking about it earlier, that movie, all the passes, I don't know many there was, 120 or something like that. Yeah. Did it's, you watch the entire thing on? Yeah, yeah you watched yeah, it. Yeah, Good luck I, I, yeah. I could not. So that's under, who you were last I week. could not understand. 46 why, passes. Why, why a St. Yeah. Johnson player never half something to? You know, at one stage. You're at an one an stage. Absolute disgrace. No, <laughs> I, if, you're, if you're getting beat that amount and you'd like to see a player getting near somebody and going, hey, God, Sometimes it. you kind of get near. I've been in that oh. situation five and six at the Ibrox yeah. Park. Sometimes you, you literally kind of get near them to kick yeah. them. Mm. Like they just yeah. shift it and it's away, and you, you kind of get near them to boot them. Yeah, well, to be fair, by the way, and for the benefit of the football purists, I must apologise for Ruffy's conduct. He's, he's gone to Turkey and he wants to fight with everybody. Um, but nevertheless, I'm not, I'm not having it, you. I mean, at the end of the day, and again, nothing nothing like exaggeration, 132 passes. 46. 46 that passes. Oh, yeah, that's... Felt it. If I said Johnson player, I would have felt it on him too. <laughs> Perfectly honest with you. That's what your thumb's for. Scroll it forward and quickly get to the, to the bit of the box. But nevertheless, it it was a good goal, but over and above that, suddenly, Gia Kamakis might be a worry for them now, but Kyogo's there. But isn't it, it's just like, almost seamless like the day that Kyogo comes back, you know, because Gia Kamakis, I mean, he would have a decision, you know, if both are fully fit, who do you start with against Rangers? Well, he's got to be loyal to Gia Kamakis if, he, he if think, he's fit, you know. I think he would be, um, but it, that is a, an astonishing thing to say, and I think you're right, by the way, Six months ago, somebody had said, Kyogo's fit, Giacomakis is fit for a Rangers game, but Giacomakis has got to start. Yeah. I mean, men in white clothes, uh, white uh, 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 suits would be coming for you. So, yeah. I mean, that's how quickly things have changed. I mean, I think for what would really have pleased uh, Celtic and, and, and the manager, <coughs> Posta Coglu, is two things. Once, one, it was relentless, his word, we never stop. Everybody was at it. But the players he brought on were crucial. I mean, Abada is who has been sort of flittering around the edges of Celtic now. You know, he, not a tremendous performance from him. Uh, O'Reilly shows his class. Uh, and I just think Kyogo comes on. And the yeah. Kyogo pass, you're talking about 46 passes. But there's another way to pass the ball as well. There's the one pass. Mm, yes. And Kyogo's one pass is just... There's still top, top notch. It's, it's great how he does me mention the three players who made the contribution. And of course, as I was reading, you know, over the whole game, and then, then McCarthy come on. Mm. I mean, he comes on and gets a win bonus. Tumble. And, and, Tumble, and, and you're yeah. not even talking about those two players. No, there's so much competition now for Celtic. I mean, there was a, a point, you know, not that long ago where they were bringing on kids, you know, and, and to, to, to try and win games. You know, the young oh. lads coming on on the pitch and. We're talking about Celtic have no strength in depth, but they're certainly strengthened in the January window. Uh, as I said, and now they have real competition. You know, Turnbull's coming back for injury, Kyogo's coming back for injury. You know, and those guys in the team want to want to be a part of it. They want to win the treble. You know, and they want to win everything this season. So the only way to do that is to stay in the team and they play well. And I, I agree. I mean, it's not only strength in depth and, and maybe taking a punt in players coming back. You're talking about players that are, you know, the form's out there, you know. Turnbull, again, when Turnbull got in, injured, everybody's saying, is that Celtic season completely derailed? Now you'll be lucky to get to get a starting place. O'Reilly's not, not a, O'Reilly's basically not done anything wrong since he came to Celtic. Abada has been one of the players of the season. Yeah. And that's three guys that you could see are almost certainly not start. And funnily enough, he's, Abada has been one of the top players for them. But he's, he's not one of those players that I think when they come out with the nominees will be at the forefront of everybody's mind, Ruffy, for Player of the Year. No, I think no, I mean, in the Celtic camp, yes, but I'm talking about the overall... No, uh, I think Jota would be ahead of him, Abada, you know, if you were talking about, you know, one or the two. Yeah. But I mean, 
No, I agree we, with you. We, we spoke about it, you know, the other day there that nobody had really jumped it and hit us. Yeah. A four had jumped mm. it and hit us. But as, as this always happens at this time of the year, when the important things happen, players start to jump out and you hit mm. you and go, well, maybe mm. it's him. Yeah. We did speak about the um, players of the year the other day there. That was two weeks ago. Um, you were on holiday last week. Must have missed Must have missed that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Watching it in Turkey. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was at the cocktail bar. Like. Yeah, yeah, I bet you were. <laughs> uh, I really wanted you to joke on it. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, uh, the manager uh, thinks it's Rosie in the garden because, quite simply, uh, the players are out there and they want to impress the supporters. We've got 95 minutes every week to produce something memorable for, for our supporters, so why waste a minute of it? You know, it doesn't matter what the scoreline is, doesn't matter what you know where the game's at. Um, there's a moment there where we can produce some magic for our supporters. Well, let's go and take it. Um, you know, even off the back of last week when he said, you know, when he was talking about Dermot Desmond saying he would walk 500 miles to Manny yeah. Celtic, I'll tell you one thing about him. We're a slightly cynical lot, especially in the <laughs> journalistic world, too, when he mentioned, you know, here's plan A and we're going to work at plan A and then we're going to work harder at plan A. But boy, he deserves credit because they are all buying into his game plan. Yeah, he stuck to his guns. I mean, we were all calling in here, and why is he not tighten up? Why does he not start playing more, more defenders? You know, and see games out at one 0 and two 0 No, no, no. He, he wants to go one five six seven nothing. You seen that at the weekend? You know, and when Celtic get it right, and they're starting to get it right now, that style of play it's fantastic to watch. You know, when they go one or two nothing up, you know, four or five months ago we were thinking, we'll, we'll just sit in now and can take your one 0 or two 0 Now you're thinking Celtic could score six or seven, and in that, that relentless form at the minute, so. He deserves great credit for sticking to his principles. Yeah, just as a footnote to this, um, we're going to switch over to St Johnson <coughs> and their predicament <coughs> now, but and then we're going to speak to Andrew Shiny about Aberdeen's predicament. Um, but Mary McCormick makes a really good point on our message board here. She says, what about Maida? He deserves <laughs> a lot of praise. We haven't even mentioned that boy. I mean, the, the, the trouble's a great thing, because on social media three weeks ago, <laughs> I was getting pellers. It's been just not good enough. <laughs> you know, you'll have to send this boy back. And, and now he's... Now he's become, you know, completely central to what uh, Celtic want to do. I mean, I don't think that, you know, people on message words can correct me, but I don't think Ange has made one misstep in the recruitment. There's yeah. not even one that you've got a question about. I mean, They're all contributing. Every player that he brought in, huh? you know? That's really unusual. Yeah, and I even read at the weekend, I think it was in one of the broadsheets, um, an interview that, you know, praising Starfelt. Mm. And I mean, the world has yeah, turned yeah, full yeah, circle, yeah. Ruffy, because well, I thought he was a bomb scare at the start. Well, I think the world has turned full circle in the Celtic defence, because we're all on the assumption mm. they're a bomb scare. You know, none of them complement each mm. other. They lose goals far too easy, and it just shows you how things change. And, and it's all about consistency. It's all about sticking with your two centre-halves, no matter what, getting them to know each other, mm. and that's when you get the benefit. That's my point. My my player of the year is Callum Carter Vickers. Yeah. Because I think it's the old it's the old uh, the old line about all the top managers say you know attack wins your games, defence wins your leagues. Yep. Okay. Uh, and that's why Obi Wan is here, by the way. Who said that? that? Me? <laughs> Vince Lombardi or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 he's he's Lombardi. He goes, let's look at the book of codes. <laughs> I'll just I'll put this one in tomorrow. Well, um, Rafael watch the reads the Bino. Yeah, exactly. And over and above that, I think I want to thank DPG, who's just said, uh, white socks, how very 1970s, Ruffy, eh? Hey? No, I have to... No, oh, is there I a story have, behind that? I have to apologise, no, I was playing golf today at Turnberry and I didn't have enough time to change. Yeah. So, is that uh, like is it, absolutely it so. just out of curiosity is that Trump Turnberry I don't mention that guy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're still going to have three people yeah well done Ruffy um, what about St Johnson it was grim it's hard um, for the players and quite a lot of people have commented uh, at the weekend when they were watching the game Tam you could see every St Johnson's player's head was down after goal number three went in goal number four uh, but that's it's a free hit against Celtic. I think that's not where they're going to, you know, fight for survival. Certainly not against the likes of Celtic or Rangers. Yeah, you see it as a free hit, but no, when you're getting beat seven nothing, you know, if you get beat two nothing, yeah. and that that their goal difference is to a massive hit, you know, and they were that was a, as good as a point for St Johnson, really, and that has been halved in two. 
you know, that's but that's seven 0 drubbing, so that's that, that was crucial for them. Uh, but I've been in that situation myself, going to Celtic Rangers and you're five six. You just, there's nothing you can do. You can't get near them. Mm -hmm. You just want the final whistle to go. You want to get back in the dressing room, get in the bus, and go home mm -hmm. um, because you've just been battered. So. I, th I don't think they'll let it affect them. Um, I think they'll, they'll bounce back in the bottom six. Yeah, Callum Davison just says their fight is elsewhere. It's backs against the wall. The confidence is, is up. You can see them uh, putting loads of energy in. Uh, today we couldn't, couldn't match them. Uh, really, that's more than a success with them. Uh, ultimately, our fight's for survival. You know, it's not games like it was a really tough place to come get a point, uh, if not three. So our, our real fight is uh, survival. And... Obviously, after the split, after we break, uh, we'll be ready. We've been in good form. Uh, you take take away today's game, uh, where we're just beaten, uh, basically by a better team. Is St Johnson going to survive? I think ultimately they will survive. I think ultimately the odds are that they'll finish second bottom and win a playoff. Um, I think because the playoff is so desperately skewed against championship clubs. Uh, so I think you know, it's ultimately they also if if you're asking me will they get out of the bottom two I think that's a bigger question I think Tabs put the, uh, the thing, you know if St Murren continue this free fall you know can they catch St Murren there is a, an outside chance of this but I think they'll get out I think, and I think Dundee's that's it Dundee can yeah, uh, yeah gone. They, they're gone. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the funny thing about it, we're about to speak to a guy that we thought was coming out of his downer, <laughs> but, <laughs> but suddenly, suddenly he's, no. he's heading right back into it. I know how you, listen, I don't know why you're saying, oh no, we're about to go to Andrew Shiny, and I'm almost certain that in his house, eventually, half those frames on that wall, Ruffy, will be getting fired right out the window <laughs> because this Aberdeen side are murder. Yeah, that, I mean, I think that's why Jim Goodwin was taken there to make sure they got in the top six, and it's not happened. I don't blame him. You know, that we, I think we all agree that uh, you need to be assessed and bringing in your your own your own players. But I think they they thought he had the ability to keep mm. them in there. It's a massive blow for Aberdeen uh, uh, as a club, you know, to be there. You know, and uh, they really do have to get this this season out the window and get back to where they were. Yeah. Well, Andrew. What's your take on it all after watching Ross County defeat Aberdeen at Pitaudry? Well, you've got to say, Peter, Aberdeen got exactly what they deserved from the game, which was precisely nothing. I don't know what was more disappointing, um, the lack of invention in their play, which, you know, we've been bemoaning ever since the departure of Ryan Hedges, or the apparent lack of desire and effort that was shown throughout the game. The first half was dreadful. I think there was one effort and goal, uh, a David Bates header that was a comfortable save for Ross Laidlaw. But second half, you're expecting something to happen and it just didn't. And then Ross County get their penalty. There were two penalty incidents. The, the referee got them wrong on both occasions. He should have given the penalty when Connor Barron challenged Reagan Charles Cook. He didn't. And then he gave a penalty for handball against Johnny Hayes, which frankly, was a nonsense. But at the end of the day, the team that deserved to win the game won the game and finished top six. And all credit to Ross County, their story since the first 10 games of the season when they'd only picked up three points has been nothing short of miraculous. So all credit to Malky Mackay. But Aberdeen, I mean, a couple of games ago, I was saying six points and Aberdeen can be top six. Six points and they would have been fourth. Instead of which, they pick up one point, they're ninth, and now they're in a desperate struggle to make sure they don't get sucked into a relegation playoff. And that's the doomsday uh, scenario on all this. I, I did actually mention on Friday, Tam, that I thought Aberdeen um, would be in the bottom six because I just didn't see any spark from the players that he's inherited. The manager hasn't shirked his responsibility. Here's Jim Goodwin. I'm going to take my fair share of the responsibility as well. You know, I've been in there for seven weeks. I think I've had enough time to turn around, to get the results needed, to get the points needed, to get us top six. And I haven't been able to do that. It's as simple as that. But, you know, I don't think the supporters could lack the players' commitment or effort today. Yeah, well, if the manager says that the, the supporters can't, um, you know, criticise the players for effort today and commitment... Um, they can certainly criticise them for ability because there's just a whole load of Aberdeen players there that are not fit to wear the jersey. And uh, 
and that will be uh, that will be shown in the, the transfer window when uh, players are moved in and out. And Tom would not fit to wear the jersey. And the, the, I don't know if you saw the Berlin derby yesterday. All the Hertha players were called. They get they get absolutely thrashed by Union, who are supposed to be very much the, the smallest team in Berlin. And the ultras called all the Hertha players over and had to give their shirts to the supporters because they weren't good enough to wear the jersey. So that's a salgue to the tail. <laughs> for, 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 they literally had to take the jersey off and hand it to supporters because they weren't good enough. Wow. Uh, um, but they were told to do it. Yeah, they were told. The, the ultras told them to come over uh, and the players one by one, not one missed it, went over and gave their jersey, their heads down. Yeah. Strange culture, but there you go. Uh, go back to the Scottish football. Yep, Tam was right when he was talking about uh, Stephen Robson at St Martin. You know, he's got to get his own players in. Sean Maloney, who we'll go on to uh, probably towards the end of the programme. Yeah. Yeah, save Tam. <laughs> save Tam. <laughs> Sam's still in the, 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 the period of grieving, so that may end <laughs> shortly. But uh, he'll be in the same situation. Jim Goodwin's in the same situation. And the thing about it is, we know, Peter, there'll be well, plans will be well underway about certain names coming to all three clubs. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, well played to Andrew Shiny highlighting Malky Mackay because the Ross County manager was just fulsome in his praise of what the players have achieved. Yeah, I mean, I think when you've got three points after 10 games, then uh, you certainly don't think you're sitting in the top half after the split. So uh, despite how we were doing in terms of how I felt we were playing, um, you've know, got three points after 10 games and you know, nobody's tipped for the, for the relegation. So... The fact that from then we've been consistent and we've gradually climbed up the table um, it shows great character and spirit to the, to the players. Yeah, fair play to them Andrew because I've watched Ross County on more than a few occasions and I, and I thought they had the quality to avoid even a playoff place but I don't think many of the Ross County fans even in their wildest dreams thought well there's the goal that takes us into the top six. Probably not, um, and the way they're going, there's nothing to stop them qualifying for Europe this season, uh, providing Hibs don't win the cup, and with the best will in the world, you can't see that happening, but uh, for Aberdeen, they've got to get out of this malaise, um, they haven't kept a clean sheet since the middle of December, uh, they've got one win in the last 13 league games, now they're up against sides who are absolutely battling for their Premiership futures, do Aberdeen have the character, the determination, uh, the, the just naked desire to stay there? They've got to show that in the next few weeks, Peter. Before you go, Andrew, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious to get your insight into this. One, briefly, do you think Aberdeen can escape the playoff? <laughs> you asked me last week, can Aberdeen finish top six? And I didn't hesitate. This week I do hesitate, um, such as the, that performance uh, on Saturday that just gave me no confidence at all to say yes to, you, to your question. Um, but I think Jim Goodwin has got to, you know, rumble a few people up, um, make a few changes, and 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 somehow or other find a way to yes avoid that that playoff place, um, because at the moment. Aberdeen against our broth. I think I'd fancy Dick Campbell's side. Yeah, absolutely. And the last point I'm going to ask you is, of the starting 11, who would you keep? <laughs> um, well, funnily enough, I was going through the, the, the 20 players that were stripped for the game, and there was quite a number that... Um, I was speaking to a friend of mine, and he said, wouldn't be too worried if he stayed or if he went away. Um, <sighs> I don't think there'll be massive changes, but there'll, obviously Jet's going to be away. Michael Devlin and Andy Considine won't be there next season. Um, Christian Ramirez, ever since Stephen Glass has departed, hasn't found the back of the net. He's barely had a shot at goal. Um, he, he looks a deflated character. He's got to pick himself up. But there's, there's others, you know, Teddy Jenks will be away, Adam Montgomery, because they're lone players. Um, but there's quite a few, Funso Ojo, uh, Dylan McGear, Conor McLennan potentially, um, you know, that their jackets are in sugly pegs, um, or they're not going to be offered new contracts. So I think there'll be a big turnover of staff, but at the moment you've got to keep the likes of McCrory, you've got to keep 
young Baron. Um, Joe Lewis is under contract for a number of years yet. Um, Declan Gallagher and David Bates, you would assume, are going to be kept. Um, but it's the, fo the more forward positions that they've got to really address because there's such a lack of invention about the team. Yeah, um, I, I had a feeling you were going to say that. I mean, I look at the side and I think to myself, um, I would just rip it up. I don't think there are, I don't think there are enough quality players there that uh, have what Aberdeen are looking for. We will wait to see. But as ever, the only thing that sticks in my head, Ruffy, is uh, you know, time and time again, I can hear the echoes of, uh, you know. Davy Proven used to say to me, that's fine if you've got a willing buyer <laughs> for for the players that you want to sell who are not good enough to play for Aberdeen and that is the that is the nature of it for every club, Ruffy. Yeah, but I think they're relying on the young fullbacks. I think that there's, there's people interested in him. They need I don't know how much more money the investors are want to pump in. You know, <laughs> they, they they need to get back to where they were, there's no doubt about that. You know, I I I, I if I was to go through the team, I don't think they've got a decent centre half. I think they need real quality centre halves. I think Joe Lewis has maybe been there a wee bit too long. He's not producing the saves that he used to. And they've got Ramirez up front you would stick with. But you have McCrory and Ferguson. <coughs> I think it might be time now for Ferguson to move on. I think he'll be pushing for a move. Uh, and then he'll have to start from scratch. And then we'll see what kind of money he has got to play with, with the quality of players that he brings in. Yeah, absolutely. OK, um, with that in mind, thanks to Andrew Shiny for his reflection on uh, Aberdeen. you got you got to compliment Malky Hugh. What a season for a, a club that have got a manager that not only um, it, right, rightly should be praised, his players are getting praised, but he also brought Roy McGregor into the dressing room mm. just to say a few words for what they've achieved. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, but it's not really a surprise about Malky doing well there because the problem with Malky was always the problem over the text. It was always that. That was that was his problem, getting away from uh, from the uh, the controversy over that. And I thought it was completely inappropriate for Malky to work for the SFA on the back of those texts. I didn't think it was inappropriate for him to be a football manager on the back of those texts because everybody deserves a second chance and everybody deserves uh, uh, to, 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 to pursue their living, you know, and uh, that was his living. So he was always going to be, I think, a really decent shout for Ross County because if you just look at his pedigree, not only as a, as a manager has he got a decent manager, but as a coach and a youth team coach, he's got real... He's got real pedigree there, you know, you know, Watford and etc. 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 So I wasn't shocked that A. Roy McGregor went for him and I wasn't shocked about the way he's gone about it at Ross County as well. Every season, Peter, there's a manager, you know, um, we know what you know, Celtic and Rangers managers die on winning the league. And that's it, live or die in that and they win awards or don't win awards and that. There's always a manager elsewhere in the league that, 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 that I would say was the manager of the year. And outside of, of of the obvious this year, I think uh, Malky Mackay's been head and shoulders. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you, just before we talk about Hearts and Hibs uh, <coughs> and get the thoughts of Tam on this, Ruffy, that the, the, the fixtures post-split have come out. Mm -hmm. uh, and Celtic against Rangers uh, is going to take place on the 1st of May. Yeah. Um, so it's the it's the second fixture of uh, the run. Everybody thought it was it might, might be, be the first one. Yeah, yeah. Scottish Cup semi final, then Celtic Rangers, but it's the second fixture. And uh, basically, Celtic are away to Ross County on the twenty fourth of April. Um, so that's the first one. And then over and above that, they're at home to Rangers. Then they're at home to Hearts. They're away to Dundee United and they're at home to Motherwell. Mm. So they've got those three home games yep. that I think everybody was talking about. As far as Rangers are concerned, they're away to Motherwell. Uh, that's their first one. They're away to Celtic and then they're at home to Dundee United. They're at home to Ross County. Um, and then from there, they're away to Hearts at Tynecastle uh, as well. So... Interesting uh, how that split has just been released. That's the post split fixtures. What do you make of that, Tom? Um, it's, uh, the first game of the bottom six, uh, if you see that one there as well, is a massive game. Dundee against St Johnson is the first game mm. after the split. It's so a that, belter. I mean, Dundee need to win that game or else they're relegated. You know, it's, it's a do or die. I think the gap's what, five points now. They've got to win. 
Yeah, uh, so that's an, that's an enormous uh, game for Dundee as well. And strangely enough, Hugh mentioned something about 10 minutes ago that I, I thought, oh, he's gone for it. I thought Dundee were gone um, a couple of weeks ago. I'm looking at that fixture and I'm saying, Ruffy, I, I'm looking at Dundee. There's something about them. They've got a wee bit of spark back in them. And Charlie's back at home, in there. At home to St. Johnson. At home to St. Johnson. Yeah. Well, they've got, you've got to say they've got belief, you know, and even when they played Rangers, you know, you can see there's a bit of fight there. Uh, I think St Martin, you've already touched on it, I think St Martin are the one that they two will keep be looking at and going, you know, when do we get them, you know, and what kind of fixtures have they got, three at home or two away. But to get back to the top division, I, when I looked at the, the ones that were in the six, I said, well, if you're Rangers, I've always said Rangers and Celtic have won their home games. You know, I, I think they're, they're head and shoulders above everybody. So then I'm looking at the away games and Ross County is somewhere you don't want to go. Hearts is somewhere you don't want to go. So they're the two games that I look at and say, if there's any slip-ups, that's who it'll be against. I don't think it'll be against Dundee United or Motherwell. Yeah, um, it's interesting stuff. And um, we'll go back over that before we finish uh, the programme. But uh, just on the point of... Tyne Castle, you were there, I was sitting in the press box, I always thought Hearts would be too strong, Hibs started well, but once Hearts started to get the game together, I just thought, Barry Mackay, Andy Halliday, who took some pelters in that game, but boy, did he give them what for? Yeah, just listen, first and foremost, I think Hearts deserve to win the game, no doubt about that for me, Hibs were the, were the better side the first half an hour, got the goal, needed to get the second goal, I think, uh, quickly to put Hearts under pressure. Once Hearts started to get into the game, you know, they missed two great chances. The boy Sims went mm -hmm. through trying to dink the goalkeeper and then they headed off the crossbar. So Hearts could have went in front uh, at half time. Second half, Hibs were, a, Hibs were a disgrace. Hibs were a joke the second half. You know, they, they, they chucked it. When it went to 3-1, um, they just settled for it. And there's a way to get beaten in the derby game. And I've, been, I've been in the end of big defeats and I've, I've I've handed out big defeats, but there's a way of getting beaten at Derby game, and that wasn't good enough for second half for Hibs. And I know the managers come out and said the exact same thing, and the players, they've got to get a reaction for Saturday in the Cup semi final because if they go out and play the way they played in the second half, Hearts will take three or four of them again. So there's something needs to be done. Darren McGregor sitting on the bench, Lewis Stevenson sitting on the bench. I'd be playing them on Saturday. I'd be playing them. I think some of the younger boys at this minute are not are no good enough um, to go and, and compete against Hearts. So. He's got a lot of big decisions to make this week, Sean Maloney. He's got a big game coming up on Saturday against Hearts, but the weekend there wasn't good enough for any Hibs supporter watching that bar the first 20 minutes. Yeah, Sean Maloney himself said he wasn't going to accept that type of performance. At Parts first half, we were very good, but we can't allow uh, a set play goal in the second half after a couple of minutes to then completely alter how we played um, and the mentality of the team. So uh, I think that's the biggest disappointment. <laughs> Uh, I think performance second half, I can't accept, um, and I won't. Yeah, he's a man that I think has got to make changes, Ruffy. Um, there's a number of players that have to go. Yeah, he's the same. He comes into the same category as Jim Goodwin. You know, that uh, he'll identify the players that are there, you know. And I know we keep talking about Nisbet not being there and Boyle not being there. But I think Hibs supporters now be waiting to see the reason that he was brought to the club. You know, what kind of players can he attract? to come in, because obviously they've got to give them the financial backing, but them again, you know, as Tam sees them week in, week out, they, they need a drastic change as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, fair play to Hearts, I thought they were uh, they were at it, I thought they played some good football eventually when they got a grip of the game, uh, and Barry Mackay um, is just, you know, he's just cruising at times through games, he's confident mm. on the ball, he's looking for the passes as well, there was a lovely little deft flick. Uh, oh, it was well. fantastic yeah. to um, you know, your Halliday. man Halliday, and then Andy Halliday was just looking and time enough to pick his spot. It's a great finish as well, yeah. I liked Dan, I was, I, I was impressed with, you know, Sims as well, because he did what he can do. He's a big battering run. Ah, two strikers for Hearts battered the Hibs back three. And yeah. see, once you've got that in front of you, Tam will know better than us, but, you know, and Al will know we're playing with defenders. See if defenders are getting ragdolled. I mean, Hanlon was ragdolled. Han Hanlon's a, a good physical centre-half. And see, when you've got that, it's quite funny. The guy shows, you know, sometimes they show they don't have the technique. That missed chance show they're not quite... But if, if they had that physicality in the technique, they would be Romelu Lukaku and they wouldn't be playing at Tynecastle. Yeah. So that physicality, I think, was a basis. 
of Hearts being allowed to play, if you've got that up front, if you've got th those guys causing problems, it makes the job an awful lot easier for everybody around what, you. What, what Sims does is he takes the pressure off a of Boyce. Mm. Hibs have not got anybody to take mm. the pressure off of anybody up front because they've not got anybody. A 19 year old young lad up there, yeah. you know, himself, and I feel sorry for him. He's, for me, he's no quite ready to be the number one striker for Hibs, but the, the rough is it, they've dealt. Mm. You know, yeah. James Scott's come in and he's been terrible. Mm. You know, Doidge is injured, Nisbet's out, they're so boiled, they've not dealt. So I think Sean needs to needs, needs a, a good transfer window in the summer, but he needs to try and get some performances together before the end of the season. Well, well the think, Saturday game. That's huge. It's, it's the season, because, that's it's, it. Because if you go in, if you go into a transfer window, even if you don't win the cup, even if you come up against Celtic or Rangers and you don't win the cup, that's forgiven. You know, that's, you can say, right, that, and, and by the way, any chance team, Celtic, Hibs or Hearts would fancy themselves anyway, they're quite rightly, but if you go in to the end of a season on two successive defeats by your rivals, one keeping you in the bottom six, one knocking you out of the Scottish Cup, it's, it, it really does affect the club. It yeah. does affect the club. And I mentioned to you, and I wasn't joking about it, I suggested to him that Hearts would be spanking him on two occasions, and I can't see anything else other than that coming again at the weekend. I didn't see enough from him to suggest that there's going to be some kind of dramatic turnaround. I think Hearts will march into the Scottish Cup final, but over and above that... You can leave him alone. You really yeah. can just, come on, you're just, well, come on, come on. You can leave the lad here alone. And I think he's next. Yeah, I know, exactly. I know the last thing he needs is a, is a bit of honesty in this one. Uh, what's another thing about it, which is we're talking about good performances from Hearts. Uh, right across the pitch, but uh, Barry Mackay was one that uh, Robbie Nielsen wanted to single out. Yeah, look, he's a top player, top, honestly, very, very good player. I'd like to think that he'll be around about the Scotland squad when it comes in the June games. You know, I know we're going to take a bigger squad, and I'd like to think you know, Barry should be around about it, Stephen Kingsley should be around about it, Halkett's been in it, and Craig will be there. You know, we've got a number of players that, that are playing really well at the moment. Yeah, uh, Robbie Nielsen. Robbie Nielsen just named half the heart side should be around about the Scotland squad. Uh, Stephen Kingsley, Barry Mackay, Craig Gordon, Halkett's already had a wee sniff of it. But Mackay, unfortunately for me, Ruffy, is just while really good and, and finding a new lease of life. I wonder your thoughts on this if he's just below a plethora of. Yeah. Top drawer midfielders. Yeah, he is. And, I mean, that friendly was an ideal chance to see if he, he could make the step up, but he never got the chance. You know, I think he's a great club player. We don't know if he can make that level. He, he's certainly my nomination for being one of the four for the player of the year. I think he's had a fantastic season. I've been talking about him for the last two or three months and he, he's outstanding. He's the kind of player you want to go and pay money to see. He makes things happen. So he, if... There was a four coming out, he'd definitely be one of my four. Yeah, well done to Jim Ross, who regularly says hello to us at Tynecastle, and he's just said to you, um, glad you got your Hearts 3-1 prediction right, Peter. Tam's 1-1 was correct at half-time. <laughs> <laughs> so there you are. I tell you, at the end of the game, I actually thought that Hearts had won 1-0 or 2-0 with the gestures that they were giving me. Yeah, absolutely. That's always the good thing about it, wasn't it? As soon as... Uh, no escaping by the, 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 as long as it was the there, last row of the as stand. As long as it wasn't there five. Uh, the five one was everybody used to stop me. You couldn't put five fingers on oh, for a photograph. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, listen, you're of that age where you remember how long it lasted when Hibs, the great Hibs side, mm -hmm. spanked Hearts 7 0 mm -hmm. at Tynecastle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was incredible. And those kind of score lines stay in your head. I don't think it's going to be that at the weekend, Hugh. I just think Hearts are too good for Hibs. I think all. all uh... I think all reasonable assumptions would be that. I just, I, I just, I just think that you know. I think Hibs is a big problem. Times identified it is up front. If you haven't got somebody you can hang your hat on, you're going to be in problems up front. But I think it's such an important game for Hibs on, on, on Saturday that I don't know. I'll have to have a think about. It. I might just squeak it. There you go. I've got. Just go, go. What you got to go Hibs to squeak I it. Just, I might just go having Hibs not to having yeah. not watched the game at the weekend. Yeah. I've watched the game at the weekend. Yeah. yeah. And, and you um, think they're going to squeak it? I just think the Scottish Cup can throw up funny results. All all logic says hearts are much stronger and better, but I think there might just be a tune in this Hibs team. Yeah. Oh, well, there you are. That's an interesting one. Good. It's all about opinion. Hope you're right. Yeah. Young. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's all about shuggy. opinions. Hope you're right, Shuggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ruffy, what about Charlie Adam? What oh, a strike! Come on, you've got to wax yeah, lyrical. About fantastic, it. you know. And, and and now, when you hear other managers talking them up, other managers are saying, "Hey, go to watch what go watch what he does," you know. And he has and he has that ability. I mean, we all know him when we sit here. And, and he's as fit as in, but he doesn't look as fit as everybody else that's on the park. <laughs> but he still has time and space to get the ball and do things that other guys can't do. And that, that shot in particular <clears throat> just summed him up. But he had another couple of passes now just to look up and a wee dink here that the other players can't do. And that's what he does. But I'll tell you what he does very well, Tom, and, and it's, it's something that really good midfielders, great midfielders can do it at another level again. But Charlie can lift his head, as Ruffy mentioned. He makes a 10-yard pass look simple. And a 5-yard pass, and these 5 and 10-yard passes keep possession and keep the whole thing running and moving. And then he plays his special pass. Or then he looks up and thinks, I can hit this right across my left foot and get the swerve on it for the goal. Ah, he's, he, I think he's learned as he's got older, he's more, more experienced. I think when he was younger, he tried to hit that World Cup ball all the time. And I think much to the ire of the Rangers supporters at times. So I think he's learned when, when to play short, when to play long. Uh, that just comes with experience. But he's, it was a great strike for him. And the previous week he came on and scored, uh, set up two goals as well with two free kicks. So he's dangerous running about the box. Where, uh, you know, shooting or crossing, you know, he's got that ability to pick somebody out and... Dundee are, are scrapping away, they're scrapping away, they're going to need to win games, but you know, points is not good enough, it's a great point, been 2-0 down away to your rivals, you know, particularly when you come off and here, St Johnson have, have been spanked, so, but they've got to win that game, the one after the split at home to St Johnson, that is an absolute must win, and if they win that, they go two points behind, then you never know, the great escape could be on, but and must it, win game. And it must be great if you're a striker with Charlie there, because you're training with him all week, you know what he can do in training. He's probably doing all these things that we've seen him doing this Saturday. So if you're a striker and you're, you're making runs, you know you've got somebody who's got the ability to find you. Mm. You know, and, and that, that, that must be a joy as a striker. If I make this run, there's a guy behind me who's got the ability to find me. Uh, and, and that's what they'll be relying on. We saw what happened when he was injured, when he was here. You know, they just nothing was happening for them. Well, look at this. Look at the, 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 this, is where, this is why I've got a sneaky feeling. I might be wrong. But I've got a sneaky feeling they're going to make it interesting going down to the wire. And here's why, Hugh. Dundee against St Johnston and St Mirren play Hibs that day. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that Hibs are a better side than St Mirren. So St Mirren could be dragged into it. And this is game one after the split. And then you're looking, you're saying to yourself, well, the next one after that is St Johnston, St Mirren. Mm -hmm. And then Dundee are away to Aberdeen. You know, it suddenly it could come <coughs> down to, it could be that point here and there mm -hmm. that you're suddenly saying to yourself, by the time you get down to Dundee going to St Mirren away, St Johnston then have to go to Livingston, which is a terrible place to go. And then you've got Dundee at home to Hibs. And the last games on the last day is Livingston, Dundee and Hibs against St Johnston. Mm -hmm. And St Mirren are up at Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. That's why I think St Mirren are in big trouble. There could be that, some twist here. That gives me the fear, that last day fixture, Livingston against Dundee. Because when I was at Dundee, we get relegated in the last game of the season at Livingston. And I hit the post in the 93rd minute to win the game and keep us up. Nonsense. So that's going to be, the, that could be a, a very similar scenario. Livingston away, that, that Dundee fans will be horrified when they see that final fixture because it could... It could happen again. Yeah, and and of course, uh, Livingston against Motherwell at the weekend, Graham Alexander couldn't get a turnout of that Motherwell side, but suddenly a draw, and Graham Alexander is talking about the joy of finishing in the top six. We said it right at the start, that's what we want to try and do, and then we put it to bed and just concentrate on the games that are right in front of us. Um, but, you know... Um, Finishing top six is is uh, there's a lot of work gone into it from from everybody at the club, not just the the staff and the players, but I can always hear uh, some of my old bosses saying, "Better being lucky than good." No, no, I, very much. So. I mean, the, the the form since Christmas, goodness gracious! I mean, this has been the most really strange campaign from hearts down. Um, you know, nobody, people, clubs going in a couple of wee runs and. 
it's, it's funny watching uh, David Martindale and, and, and Saturday when, he, you know, what, six, eight weeks ago, <coughs> I would be saying, you know, well, Livingston are, you know, certainties for the top six or four. And the way he just form has... I think it's because, do you know what, there's not much between the lot of them. You know, after Hearts, yeah. down, I don't think there's much between a lot of them. And I think little things like, um, well, not little things, but significant things like if you lose Tony Watt, for example, I think it's a huge blow to, um, to, to, to Motherwell. I think I think Dundee were unwise to, to change the manager when they did. I think uh, St. Johnson, for example, their recruitment came too late. They should have been recruiting in the summer. Yeah. Rather. So there's wee excuses all the way all the way up the league, but I don't think there's much between a lot of them. Just a wee word for Charlie Mulgrew, uh, oh, free kick. I thought right. he meant it, Ruffy. I thought it was a belter. He's done that yeah. before. Yeah, I thought he meant it as well. Yeah, you can say whatever you like, but to, to be able to ping the ball for that area, you know, into the top corner is, is absolutely superb. I loved his oh, after in the view. game interview. Did he? Yeah. His interview technique has now made him uh -huh. an icon. He's oh, yeah. Him. I mean, there's going to be his in interviews, Travis. I think he made a great point in the interview. He says, what you do with that is you hit it as a shot and goal. And you'll see it a lot of times, not so much from that angle, uh, although, uh, you know, and Coutinho tried it against Spurs at the weekend. You just put it on, and if it hits anybody or somebody gets ahead to it, the goalie misjudges it, you get a goal. The one you see quite a lot doing is the one from far out. Ruffy will know this one where they hit it that's going to hit the six yard box. Aim for the back post. And aim yeah. for the back post. And the many times the goalie is looking at the, the, the player running in, the ball ends up. So Charlie's bang on when he says, I'm hitting it on target. If it goes in, I mean it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's us looking. We've, we've given you the news. We'll go back over those post split fixtures. But Celtic against Rangers is 1st of May, the second of the post split fixtures, not the first one. Will that have a bearing on. Uh, the title decider, if there is indeed, it's an interesting one, Hugh, the way this is all panning out. Because it is, because if, if the two fixtures that Celtic fans are think, you know, because everybody knows who you're going to play, and everybody knows basically this time uh, who you're going to play home and away, and Celtic fans would say, well, Ross County is a place where you could, you know, you could drop a couple of points up there. I mean, yeah. It was Anthony Nelson came to the rescue and time added on in the last game. <clears throat> and you could obviously, any Celtic Rangers game, there is a possibility of either club winning that. So the first two fixtures for Celtic, I, I think, are you know, the are crucial ones. Uh, uh, but after that, you know, if they get through that unscathed, well, obviously they've won the league. It's got to be the only country where we're not allowed to have a, a title decider between the top two teams. But that's just... The tip of the iceberg and how backward we all are in this area. A um, couple other little things. Uh, predictor, woof, Ruffy, mm -hmm. it's getting close now. Let's have a look and see exactly what's happening with this predictor. <sighs> Alison McConnell, 283. Ruffy tucked in behind her on 278. I'm on 274. Tam's on 258. Hugh is on 250. And Tam Cowan is one behind you, Hugh, on 249. It's a split again, isn't it? Mm. It's a split. It's <laughs> a split. <laughs> 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 you can I'm, drag it in I'm glad I'm not in that bottom three <laughs> anyway. It's a split. It's a split. Yeah, Ruffy and I are like, we don't care if Alison wins. We're just not paying. <laughs> it's as simple as that. But uh, I, I, don't think, know I you... think they three should get together and make a pact. Yeah. Right, you're at that stage now. I've, got two, I've got two teams yeah. behind me. I'll just I have to tell you, what a, what a meal we're going to have. It's going to oh, be a right good laugh, right, Ruffy, isn't it? I couldn't believe they're going to Glen Eagles. It's going to be it's really wonderful. It's, it's going to be <laughs> I that do, bad, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah, exactly. Next to the big giant deck chair, um, I do believe, Ruffy, that we will reel Allison in in the last four or five games. Yeah, well, I was unfortunate that that Livingston Motherwell game done me for five points. I had two one Livy, so that goal in the last kick uh, would, would have caught up in there. But no, no, I think uh, no, I'll credit to her. No, she's. She's been down for a wee while, but she's beginning to stabilise herself. But we all know that somebody's got a 20 pointer. Oh, there's a somebody's got a 20 a... pointer with the next five. Well, five hopefully, it's no Karen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remember, by the way, remember, by the way, the one thing that I would say to you is there is a 21 pointer, but it's possibly this camp. 
because he's compromised because he's yeah. always thinking Hibbs can get a win. So it clouds his vision in the predictor. That's why he's where he is. clouding it now. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Hibbs are getting gubbed, they're getting gubbed. <laughs> Bro, he can't wait for that. Just a quick one on a couple of points here, guys. Um, we will go back over some of those uh, post-split fixtures. But uh, I'm looking there at the predictor uh, after that. VAR is going to be contributed to on a sliding scale of where you're going to be finishing in the league. Um, so the big clubs are going to pay the majority of it. Yeah, I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, I know that VR has to come. It has to come for a variety of reasons. One of the reasons is to keep Scottish football as a meaningful, <laughs> significant league because all the big leagues are, are having it. But in the terms of, his, of what you should be spending money on, I think a lot of clubs outside Celtic and Rangers will be saying to themselves, why are we spending money on this? Yeah, uh, well, uh, listen, there's still a vote to come mm. and there's a lot of clubs uh, have got their say on it, whether that happens or not, only time will tell, but I think we'll be a laughing stock if we do not get VAR into our country. Uh, down South English Premier League, there was only one game to talk about. It was that big game at the uh, Etihad. It was Man City 2, Liverpool 2. What a game. Here's how the two managers saw this one. We have to be, we have to be pretty much as close to perfection as somehow possible to win seven Premier League games, which is absolutely insane. But that's obviously the only way to beat this team, if it's enough. Uh, we miss the opportunity, you know, to, to beat them. A feeling that we leave them alive. Uh, but, uh, yeah, <coughs> heads up, I said to the team after the game, so I don't want one second side, so go and announce everyone so how good you have done how proud we are and i think it was a good game for our fans for liverpool fans for uk for around the world i thought it was a great game ruffy um it, but can they win seven games liverpool and hope city slip up no i think somebody will slip up i think every year uh down through the ages there's been a game you know that you would have thought and liverpool, liverpool had won member they, they to go to crystal palace yeah i think there's a, a wee team always hovering about because they've obviously got things to play. They all want to be in the league as well with the money that's at stake. I think points will be dropped. Uh, again, not at home, uh, but we'll be looking for the midweek ones. But it's a joy to watch the top players on show. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some fantastic games coming up. Incidentally, there's some breaking news which uh, I just might as well quickly uh, read out to you. UEFA have confirmed a partial closure of Atletico Madrid Stadium for the match against Man City following incidents during the first leg between the two teams. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, that's a, a financial hit for them. Will it make a blind bit of difference? Atletico nil, Man City won from the first leg. Who are you going for? Tough, 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 really is, because um, Atletico are a good mob and Simeone, you know, is, is a great coach. Slight preference is for Man City because they've got the goal. Yep, I think so. Liverpool 3, Benfica 1, it's at Anfield. Yes, Liverpool. Yep. Um, tomorrow night's game is Bayern Munich, Villarreal. One nothing. To I Villarreal. watched the first leg and Villarreal should have been two or three nothing up. They should have been two, two or three nothing. I don't think Bayern. She will know more than me. He watches a lot more of Bayern, but I don't think that they don't look the same team this season. They, yeah. they look, you know, they look poor at the back. It's the first game in a while they've no scored as well. So. I think Villarreal could put Bayern out. Yeah, and the oh, champions, yeah. the champions of Europe, Chelsea, look as if they're heading out. Yeah, the 3-1 right, right. down to Madrid. I can't see that coming back in any way. Interesting as well, we, we, we talked to earlier, Lewandowski going to Bar uh, Barcelona as well. That throws up, where does Haaland go? Because Haaland was, you know, people think he might go to Barcelona. They're not going to have Lewandowski and Haaland at Barcelona. So I wonder if Real Madrid or Man City or... That's the, that oh, I'd, love, I'd love to yeah. see him at Man City. Oh, I'll I'll tell you I would be going down the water for that time. Aye. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, he wouldn't be going to Manchester United. <laughs> God, it doesn't get any worse than losing that, to Everton. How bad a thing is that to say? You know? oh, I mean, cause not even because they're a, know, a top how, club. I know, isn't that amazing? Because that would be in, in, in tradition. What a club that would be for Haaland. Mm. Yeah. Number nine at, my, at Old Trafford. Incredible. And uh, what a week we've got coming up. Not only are we uh, looking towards Rangers against Braga and hopefully uh, Rangers can get past Braga, but the Scottish Cup semi-finals are mouth-watering. Uh, Celtic against Rangers on the Sunday, um, but Hearts against Hibs. Oh, 
it's just going to be magnificent. Even he's nervous now and he's not even near it, uh, which is <laughs> absolutely brilliant. And then we've just had the post split. And just in case you haven't heard it again, Celtic against Rangers is on the 1st of May. It's a 12 o'clock kickoff. Um, but Tam rightly pointed out something that's screaming out at us. 3 o'clock on the 23rd, I think it is, uh, of April. It's Dundee against St Johnston at Dens Park. That's going to be blistering, isn't it? That's it. That's it. That's, it. that's the season in a nutshell for Dundee. You know, St Johnston will look at that game so we, we go there and win. Mm-hmm. There's no chance he's going to do. Uh, I think your pundit Charlie Adam will have a wee say in that game, Ruffy. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. And the evidence of the weekend and since he's come back for his injury, we all know he pulls the strings and uh, scores the big goals and uh, the big players win the big games. Yeah, and of course, because the game Celtic Rangers is such a massive game on the 1st of May and there's the Scottish Cup final uh, coming, what a pity you will, you will miss that, Ruffy. Are you going to the Maldives or where is it you're going now? Are you moving on somewhere else? No, no, else? I'm retiring. I'm retiring until later on in the year, possibly. Yeah, OK. Yeah. You're going to retire later on in the year? Oh, from when the football finishes, obviously, I'll be... You know, going on holiday. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the last thing. The last thing. I thought he was announcing he was gone. It was five o'clock. Yes, I'm getting more chefs. That's the only thing you can think of there. The Peter and Tam show. Brilliant. Anyway, great to have Ruffy back with us. Uh, Tam McManus and Hugh McDonald. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button. If you download the app, you can do what Ruffy did in Turkey. You get to watch the show live on your phone. It's as simple as that. Or indeed, if you you go to your apps on your uh, Sky, you can look at the apps, hit PLZ Soccer on YouTube and you'll get the show every day or you can watch it at your leisure. To everyone who's joined us today, thank you for watching.